Uh, welcome in, everyone. We're so excited for today's presentation. Uh, it is going to be a lively discussion about Medicare and everything that you need to know about um, Medicare for your business and your employees. We're letting people um, start to file into the virtual room. So just give us a moment here. But in the meantime, if you could actually go ahead in that chat feature and let us know your name, the name of your business and where in the world you're dialing in from. It's always helpful for us to see just the wonderful group of people that we have assembled here um, and understand um, kind of um, where you're coming into the conversation. So again, welcome in. You are in the right place for Medicare 101. Um, we are thrilled for today's presentation um, presented by AARP to help really educate you and your business about what, what do you need to know about Medicare and what do you need to know um, to really provide the best um, information and resources for your employees. Um, thank you for those who are starting to introduce yourselves. Again, we're asking folks just to start and um, let us know in the chat your name, the name of your business, and, and where in the where in the world you're, you're calling in from. Um, we're just going to get started here in one minute. <laughs> and on the next slide, you can see just a, a little bit of housekeeping items. Um, one thing just to, 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 to call out for everybody, um, but we are actually going to have um, time for question and answer at the end. So we know um, lots of folks are going to have, have questions, um, and uh, we want to make sure that we have time set aside for those, um, for those people as well to be able to get those questions answered. Um, we only ask that you use the Q&A button. So you should see that at the bottom of your screen near the chat button um, is, is a Q&A button. It really helps us track your questions and make sure that we're able to get them answered. Um, and then the final thing, uh, before I, I pass it off on the next slide um, to, uh, to Mr. Vaughn, but is that this session is being recorded. Um, and um, we will follow up with a number of resources and recordings um, afterward. Um, so just be on the lookout. We'll share it via the um, via the email that you registered with. And so with that, um, it's my pleasure to introduce Xavier Yvonne um, from ARP. Xavier um, <clears throat> Xavier is the senior program manager. Um, um, for Medicare education. And so Xavier is going to be our main presenter today. I'll come back in later to help with the questions, but we're thrilled for today's presentation and excited to get going. Xavier, over to you. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are having a great morning or afternoon, depending on where you're at in the world. Um, as Colin said, my name is Xavier Vaughn, and I'm the program manager of Medicare education here at AARP. And Medicare is something that we can all relate to. Whether we're turning 65, been on or going on Medicare due to a disability, ALS, and stage renal disease, um, a caregiver for someone who's on Medicare, or just uh, retiring and about to start Medicare. Medicare is something that touches us all at one point in time in our lives. So it's, it's important that we all fully understand Medicare and what and what it is. And there's a lot. There's a lot to it. And so. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed throughout this presentation because it's a lot of information to go through in an, in an hour. But luckily, we're going to let you be aware of um, some great resources that is available to you to help you navigate the complex world that is Medicare. So our agenda for the day, we're going to start off with some Medicare basics, then how you should educate your employees on Medicare and resources and tools that we have available. So some of the common questions we get surrounding Medicare is what is Medicare, what is covered, what's not covered, when should I enroll into Medicare, what happens if I don't, how is Medicare and Medicaid different from each other, how will Medicare work with my existing health care, do I need to keep my insurance, insurance plan through um, work or can I go straight to Medicare, there's a lot of different questions that people make might have. So your role as a business owner is to provide Medicare eligible employees with educational uh, materials about Medicare. And luckily here at AARP, we have some resources that are available to you where you can have that. Connect employees with unbiased sources of information. We're gonna give you some great resources of some nonprofit organizations that can help, help you navigate that and help Medicare eligible employees avoid enrollment penalties. Because there are penalties associated with Medicare if you do not enroll when you are first eligible. 
And most of these penalties will stick with the person for a lifetime. So it's crucial to sign up when you are first eligible. So what is Medicare? Medicare is a federal health insurance program for those who are 65 and up, age 65 with certain disabilities, any age with end-stage renal disease, or ALS. Now, if you are <clears throat> age 65 and up and are already collecting your Social Security payment, then that will be an automatic enrollment. But he, if you are age 65 and you're still working, so maybe you haven't collected your Social Security yet, then and you want to enroll into Medicare, then you will have to actively enroll in Medicare with Social Security Administration. If you are age 65 with certain disabilities, so if you are receiving SSDI payments for 24 months, that 25th month, um, you'll be automatically enrolled into Medicare. If you have an end-stage renal disease, if you're receiving dialysis for one month at home or three months in the facility, then you'll be eligible for Medicare. With that being said, that is something that you would actively have to enroll in as well. And unfortunately, a lot of dialysis clinics may not be aware that their um, patients would qualify for Medicare. So that's something to really keep in mind. So you're, as an employee, they are responsible for the same thing that they're responsible now with your employer-sponsored health care. You have monthly premiums, deductibles, co-insurance, and co-payments. Co so all that should feel very familiar um, with your employees. Now, some things that Medi Medicare does not cover is hearing, dental, and vision, and long-term care. And I think so many people are surprised when hearing, dental, and vision is included, especially because we know as we age, these are going to be some of the things that we're going to need more of, right? But unfortunately, original Medicare does not. When we talk about um, Medicare Advantage plans, they do cover some of that, though. And like I said, we'll go into more detail when we hit Medicare Advantage and long-term care. And it's really important to note that there is difference between long-term care, in this case, talking about a nursing home, versus a long-term care facility so or a skilled nursing facility. Um, skilled nursing facility is more like a rehab. So it's going to be if you had a, a stroke and you need to do some rehab to learn how to walk or some to talk again, and it would be better suited within um, a facility setting, that would be what's covered. But not if you are just having a lot of difficult staying and aging in place in your home, you need that um, care for the rest of your days, that is not covered under Medicare. So do not get skilled nursing care and long-term care confused. So the different parts of Medicare. Part A is gonna be your hospital insurance. This is gonna be your inpatient uh, hospital stay, some hospice and home health, and some skilled nursing facility care. So this was exactly what I was talking about. So if you need to go to like that rehab afterwards, that would be under part A. And I know you might be thinking, well, 2024 is almost over. When are we going to know the 2025 prices? Unfortunately, we do not know that right now. We will know that as soon as CMS releases that information. So typically, there are no premiums that are associated with Part A. As you know, we pay into Medicare. And so as long as you have 40 work credits, you will receive a premium, pre premium free Part A. And with that being said, I'm 30 and I've had my 40 work credits probably since I was 27. So it can take about 10 years to, to get it. Um, and if you don't, for some reason, don't have it, you can draw off from a spouse. And so what was really common back in the day was teachers didn't used to pay into the system, right? So since they didn't pay in, they didn't have their work credits. So that's why you might have saw teachers working part-time in the school still just for they could earn their 40 work credits or they were drawing off from a spouse. So part A, the deductible for 2020 for this year is $1,632 for days one through 60s of inpatient care. And a deductible can be applied more than once. So um, if you had to go back in for a different thing, for a different reason or something, then it could be applied again, your deductible. Part B is your medical insurance. So these are gonna be your primary care doctor visit, your specialist 
um, outpatient hospital services, durable medical equipment, durable medical equipment that is like your wheelchair, your walker, a hospital bed, brand home, and Medicare approved pre preventive services. Medicare offers a full list of preventive services, most at um, no cost. And if there is a cost, then it's um, a minimal amount. But please re be re please remember that once things become diagnostic, then you probably will get charged. And how I like to remember that part A is hospital and part B is hospital, medical, and alphabetical order, then they coincide to their part. So A for hospital, B for medical. So the cost for 2024 for um, part B is $174.70. This is a monthly premium that a person would be responsible for. But if you are over a certain income threshold, you will have to pay more. So individuals who earn more than 103,000 or couples who earn more than 206,000, they will have to pay a higher Part B premium. An annual deductible is $240 and co-insurance is 20% for most services. So if once you go to the doctor's office, that 20%, um, you will be responsible for 20% of that cost which as you can know, as you can imagine, depending if you're going to a specialist or you're getting some of that, maybe some of that durable medical equipment, that 20% can add up to be quite a bit. But there are some things that we can do to help mitigate that 20% that we'll talk about a little later. Part C is a Medicare Advantage plan. And this is an alternative. Um, this is an alternative to our original Medicare. So this is going to be structured very similar to your employer-sponsored healthcare. You're going to have your HMOs, your PPOs, and have to deal with in and out network. And unlike with the original Medicare, which is your Part A and Part B, your Medicare Advantage or your Part C plans are offered by private insurance companies. And these plans will combine or bundle your Part A and B, and most of the time your Part D, which is, um, your Part D is your drugs, into one comprehensive plan. So I also like, as I compared it to earlier, to your employer-sponsored healthcare, I also compared it to like your internet, your phone, your cell phone, all being bundled into one plan. Because we know we love to bundle things, or even with our streaming services now, we bundle multiple streaming services into one plan, and that's what your Medicare Advantage plan does. Now, if you decide to go with your Medicare Advantage plan at first, um, when you first enroll into Medicare, it may limit your ability to purchase a Medigap in the future. So how does it work? So Medicare Advantage plans, you have to live in the plan service areas. As you can recall, I did talk about how Medicare Advantage are your HMOs and your PPOs. So we know that you have to deal with a network. So if you are a person who travels a lot around the country or snowbirds that spend one part of the year here and part of the year there, this may not be the best plan for you. And you may have to pay an additional premium to have a Medicare Advantage plan. So no matter what you do, you will always have to pay that Part B premium. And so what they're saying here, that with the Medicare Advantage plan, you may have to pay that, you're going to have to pay that $174 plus an additional pen, uh, premium, potentially. With that being said, there are a lot of zero premium plans. And you have to follow the insurance company rules, which may require you to get a referral to see a specialist. So your part D is gonna be your prescription drug coverage. D is in drugs. And what's really interesting is part D is actually a fairly new program within the Medicare space. Um, it's been around, I believe since 2006. Um, so it, just like with your part C plan, these are offered by private insurance company, but they all have to be approved by Medicare and they help cover the cost of prescription drugs that you pick up at your pharmacy. So with Part D, the premiums can cost, can vary depending on the plan and the service area that you live in. Co and there will most likely be a co-pay or co-insurance in place and the, the, an annual deductible up to $554 or $545. And people with higher premium, just like with Part D, will have to pay a higher Part D premium as well. So this graph is a really great illustration on, on your different avenues that you can take when it comes to Medicare. You have your original Medicare, which are going to be your A and B, 
in which you can add a D. Part D is optional, I should add. But with that being said, if you do not elect to get a Part D when you're first eligible and you decide later on to enroll into it, then you will pay a penalty. So even though it's optional, a penalty will, would be assessed. And we'll talk more about penalties a little later on. Or you can go the Medicare Advantage route, which would then bundle your Part A and B and D into one plan offered by a private insurance company. So with our original Medicare, it is set up to be a fee-for-service um, type of program. And once again, our original Medicare, our traditional Medicare will include your Part A and Part B. And the really great thing with original Medicare, you can go to anywhere that accepts Medicare. And the thing is, most um, providers are going to accept Medicare. And you can choose to join a Medicare prescription drug plan for your prescription drug costs. Now, Medigaps. And as you can refer, remember earlier when we were talking about the Part C or the Medicare Advantage plans, I said enrolling to one of those plans can hinder you into enrolling to a Medigap plan. So these are what we're going to talk about now. Medigap or a supplemental insurance policy is just like your Medicare Advantage plan or your Part D. They are sold by private insurance companies. And they do exactly what the title suggests. They help cover the gaps or fill in or supplement what original Medicare um, pays. So for example, we know that there is that 20% that you're responsible for with, um, with your Part B. If you have a Medigap plan, that will help you with that 20%. So it'll help you with the deductibles and co-payments, and it does not work with a Medicare Advantage plan. So it's really important. You can only have a Medicare Advantage plan or you can have a Medigap plan. You cannot have both. In fact, it, it is illegal. Let's see, I think in either, it was in 2020, um, my grandma called me because somehow an insurance company got her to sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan when she was already signed up for a, a Medigap plan, which is illegal. We got down to it, canceled that Medicare Advantage plan before it took place, and she was able to keep her Medigap plan. Um, and it's really important to know that there are eight standardized, standardized plans that are associated with a Medigap. And these plans go from A to N. So when you hear someone talking about plan A, they are not talking about part A. Plan is associated with only Medigap. Part is associated with our, like original Medicare. So do not get that confused. So, and it's really important to buy a policy within the first six months of enrolling and you will have to pay a monthly pre premium. And these monthly premiums are going to be higher than what a Medicare Advantage plan uh, monthly premiums would be. And they do not cover prescription drug costs, um, hearing, dental, or vision. You may hear someone who's an older individual who might have a, an old plan before um, Part D became a law. So they might have a plan to have prescription drug coverage, but any current plan does not. And it's also really important to know that if you decide to enroll into a Medigap plan after your initial enrollment period time, then you will be subject to underwriting or they'll look at your um, medical history to determine if you can enroll into that plan. And they may accept you into that plan, but they may charge you a higher premium based off from um, your health, what your health um, history is. It's also really important to note that Medigaps are are um, administered or overseed seen by um, your state. So whereas Medicare is a federal program, Medigaps happen at the state level. So each state has specific Medigap laws that are in place. For example, I'm originally from Missouri. That's where I learned Medicare was in Missouri. So during your anniversary period um, time for when you first sign up to a Medigap plan, you can shop around and go to a different um, company and have a guaranteed issue into that plan without them looking at your um, medical history. So knowing these little things that are state specific can really help you also navigate Medigap and Medicare as a whole. So Medicare and the Inflation Reduction Act. You may heard about the IRA or the Inflation Reduction Act. And there has been, a, with this um, piece of legislation, 
there is a lot of really great news when it comes to, to um, Medicare beneficiaries. First, this is something I bet you all know, but insulin is available at $35 per month um, per covered prescription prescriptions. But it's really important to know also with this that not every insulin will be available through every plan. So that $35 still has to be an insulin covered by that plan. You have access to more um, of their recommend, recommended adult vaccines without any cost sharing. They show they should be free. Um, there is now a yearly cap of $2,000 out-of-pocket cap um, for prescription drug plans, um, which is really great because currently this cap is at $8,000. So going from $8,000 to $2,000 is a great achievement. And not only is it a yearly cap of $2,000, that $2,000 can be spread out throughout, throughout the entire year. So if you are someone with some high-cost medications and you would reach $2,000 in the first four months, you can actually spread out that $2,000 throughout the entire calendar year. So if you are someone with a lower income, you can imagine how beneficial this would be for you or a loved one. There's also the expansion of the low income subsidy program, also known as LIS or extra help, which is a program to help to cover um, some of the medications. And so under Part D, it rose to 150% of the federal poverty level starting this current year. So this gave much more um, people the opportunity to be impacted with this great program. So when do employees need to sign up for Medicare? So there are a few different periods to when you can sign up for Medicare. The first one being initial enrollment, the second one being a special enrollment, third being open enrollment. And honestly, most of your people are probably going to sign up during the special enrollment, potentially, because they're still working. <laughs> so during your initial enrollment, if an employee is receiving Social Security, they are um, then they are automatically enrolled at the age of 65. Employees have a seven-month period to, to do so. And so the seven-month period is three months before your birth month, your birth month, and three months after your birth month. The caveat to this is if you are born on the 1st, so we're going to use the example of my Uncle Charlie. My Uncle Charlie was born on June 1st. His birth month is no longer June. His birth month is now May. So that pushes everything up a month. And, and so it's really important to know that little bit of information for you don't wait until that, what you think is your last month when you're already outside of your initial enrollment period. And there are late enrollment penalties that are associated with part B as in boy and D as in drugs. Your special enrollment period. So this is going to be for your employees who do not sign up when they are first eligible because they're still working. Maybe they're getting their coverage through you or their spouse. And they get a special enrollment into when they can sign up for Medicare. And this um, period is available to, to those who are over the age of 65 and currently working or if they lose their employer covers through any, um, through if they retire or lose their job or, or what, what have you not. Also, there is an open enrollment period. And it's really important to note that unlike with your, with the initial enrollment period and the special enrollment period where, where you can enroll into the original Medicare, get your part A, go the Medicare Advantage route or go with your um, original Medicare drug plan in a Medigap or whatever. Open enrollment is purely for those who are already kind of enrolled into Medicare. And this happens every year from October 15th through December 7th. So we are in open enrollment season. So this is why you're probably seeing more Medicare commercial than you've ever seen before in your life. Because we're about to enter this open enrollment season. Doesn't matter if October 15th or December 7th falls on the weekend. This is the time that it will always be. And during this time, a person can, um, if they're in a Part D plan, they can stick with that same Part D plan. They can shop around, go to a different Part D plan, or they can go switch to a Medicare Advantage plan. And the flip can happen as well. If someone who is enrolled into a Medicare Advantage plan, they can stick in that plan, go to a different Medicare Advantage plan, or go to a Part D plan. Um, it's also important to note that if you were to miss this opportunity, there is a Medicare Advantage 
open enrollment period, which is March, uh, which is January 1st through, through the end of March. And if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you can kind of do the same thing that you can do during open enrollment. You can go to a different Medicare Advantage plan or go back to your original Medicare and pick up a Part D plan. So um, these penalties that we were talking about, Part A is up to a 10% penalty for the monthly premium for twice the number of years that you're not signed up. So if you do not sign up for Part D for one year, or Part A, I'm sorry, for one year, then you would have that penalty would then last you for two years. Now with Part A, for every 12 months that you go uncovered, um, you will have to pay 10% of the um, monthly premium. So we know this year it's 174.70. So you would have to pay 100 and or you would pay $17 and 47 cents as your um as a penalty for every 12 months that you go uncovered. So if you go 11 months uncovered, you'll be fine. And if you did not sign up for original Medicare when you were first eligible, then there is also a period between January through March, where you can sign up for your Part A and Part B, and your coverage will begin the following month. Now, with Part D, um, for every month that you go uncovered, you would have to pay a 1% of the national base premium. So for this year, um, it is, I think, $34. Um, so you would have to pay 1% of that for every month that you go uncovered. A great example was when I was working at a different program. I had, uh, this was probably back in 2018, I was helping out an older lady. And from 20, from 2006 to 2018, she never signed up for a Part D plan. So we would have to have take, taken the national premium and multiply that by 144%. Because unfortunately for her, if she had, she went 12 months uncovered for 12 years and so it, and it made her premium be you know her penalty to be 144 percent and unfortunately all these penalties will stick with you for a lifetime unless you qualify for an assistance program so you can remember when we were talking about the ira that we the there was an expansion of a program called low income low income subsidy or extra help if you're enrolled into that plan or the plan right or into that program or a Medicare savings program or Medicaid, then these penalties will be waived. So Medicare and your business. So if you are an employer and you have um, fewer than 20 employees, then your employees have to enroll into Medicare and Medicare would become their primary insurance if they continue to also pay for the employer-sponsored health care, then it would be the secondary. Now, if you work for an for if you are an employer, you have more than 20 employees, um, you have different options. Your employee, your employees can continue to stick with the, the employer sponsored health care, or they can go and sign up for Medicare and drop your plan, or they can kind of do a hybrid method. As you may recall, for most people, part A is free. So they can sign up for Part A and then keep um, the employer-sponsored health care insurance. And, and um, I failed to mention that there is one caveat to the fewer than two, um, 20 employees. If you are um, in a group health plan program and someone within that program has more than is qualified as a local employer, then you are all qualified as a large employer. So that is the one caveat. So the um, situation or scenarios that it can be, as we know with small employers, you enroll in Part A during your initial enrollment period. Scenario one, for large employers, you enroll in Part A during your initial enrollment period. Scenario two, you enroll in just your Part A and you keep your employer-sponsored health care. Or um, scenario three, you delay your Medicare Part A and it can be enrollment until you retire and then you'll qualify for a special enrollment period. So this is just a nice little visual of a timeline of when you should start receiving information in the mail from Social Security and Medicare. 
So about six months out, you'll receive your overview letter. In about three months, you're starting, um, which would be the very beginning of your initial enrollment period, you'll get some Medicare educational materials, um, get some third party resources. And at the end of it, you'll get some final communication with all of your materials. So engaging your employees on Medicare. Make sure you are clear and consistent in your communication. Refer employees to trusted and reputable resources, which is why you're all here today, and educate employees about Medicare prior to eligibility. So different resources. So one of the resources that, that, that there are is um, Medicare.gov. You can also call 1-800-MEDICARE. That is what the 633-4227 equates to. It's just 1-800-MEDICARE. What's really great about going on Medicare.gov is you can create an account. You can go on there and see what plans are in your area for both Medicare Advantage plans and for um, Part D plans. Um, you'll have a list of all your medications in there. They can, um, if you're already kind of on Medicare and you're going here, then they'll just auto populate a list for you of all the medications you're taking. Still so recommend you going through and evaluating um, the medications to make sure everything is correct. But then you can select the pharmacy that you would like to go to. And then um, you can sort through through um, the plans by cost. And by cost, you can sort it to where it'll be your complete cost. So examining the premium of the plan and the cost of all your medication. So it's a really valuable resource. You can go on there and look at your Medicare summary notices. You can go on there if you um, lose your red, white, and blue Medicare card. You can go on there and um, download a new one and request a new one. So it's a really great resource. Next up, we have the Medicare Rights Center, which is a nonprofit organization that is there that's there to help you navigate Medicare. Um, they have really great information on there. It's a great um, resource if you just need to learn more about Medicare as general in general. And the next up is the SHIP program or the State Health Insurance Assistance Program. And this is actually where I got my start in Medicare. And they are a free unbiased Medicare, um, provide free unbiased Medicare counseling. It is a grant through the federal government. And so they are not affiliated with any insurance company and they are just there to help you get enrolled, help you do appeals and different things like that. Next, we have ARP resources. Um, the first one being AARP slash um, Medicare. And this will take you to our Medicare Resource Center landing page. And on here, you're gonna see a lot of different articles that are available. I know one of the hot market ones right now is what's, what's new in Medicare in 2025. Um, you can go to the Medicare Q&A tool, go to um, our, the Medicare Enrollment Guide, and, and some of these are going to be things that we are going to talk about a little later on. So next we have your um, Medicare Enrollment Guide, and this was designed to really be a great tool and resource for people who are about to age into Medicare. And so you can hit the view your situation, answer a couple of questions, and they'll tell you where you're at in your initial enrollment journey, or you can go to explore the guide, which is broken up into different chapters and there are different articles within each chapter that will teach you more about Medicare. Um, topics range from Medicare essentials, um, what's next, um, how do I enroll, different things. And so this is really great. Um, this is a really great tool to just kind of learn at your own pace reading articles that are gonna be crucial for you. Next, we have aarp.org slash Medicare employer. You can go on here and we have some tool sheets, fact sheets and different things. And we have a webinar coming up, you can see those. And so this is a great place to go. If you need that trusted resource that you wanna include in a retiree package, or if you want to do your own section on, on retiree coverage, this is a really great place to go. So in conclusion, and we're going to also do a quick poll 
as well for, for all of you that are on the line. Medicare can be quite confusing. There's a lot of moving parts. Is it, there's, and everything can change depending on what pathway you want to go to original Medicare versus Medicare Advantage plans. Um, if you want to continue to work or retire the size of your employer. And there's so many variables that makes Medicare, uh, you know, like Medicare soup, it can make it very uh, messy. And so hopefully by the end of this uh, presentation, you have a better, under a little better understanding of Medicare. And if not, you, you know the resources and the tools that are there to help you navigate um, this complex journey. And so I think we're going to be ready for a um, poll. Yes, the poll just popped up. Yeah, and um, Xavier, thank you so much for this. We're gonna we're gonna get to everyone's questions here in just a second, but I, I do want to make a quick plug for the poll. It's really I know it, these are kind of silly sometimes, but they're really helpful for us um, as we always want feedback on on the information that we're um, providing to you all. Uh, and to make sure that we're, we're we're doing that. So if you if you can just take a quick moment um, to go ahead and fill that out, we'll um, we'll then turn to um, some of your questions. And, and for those of you who, who have been putting your questions in there, we've been monitoring that. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, and if you haven't put your questions in, you still have time. So go ahead and um, use that Q and A button. Um, and 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 submit any questions because um, we're gonna we're gonna move to those um, here shortly. And I know we went through a lot of material very quickly, um, but from experience, as we are, it's September twenty fourth, and we know open enrollment is right around the corner. Typically, get a lot more questions this type of time of year versus other times of of the year. So I want to make sure we had plenty of time to answer your questions that you have. I know you you all have questions. Yeah. All right. Well, let me um, stop the poll there and um, let's move to to questions. Um, one, just just to start off, because I know we we've, we've gotten that a few times, but yes, this this recording, this presentation will be shared um, via the email that you registered with. We'll also share a whole host of other resources, including some of the groups that Xavier mentioned, um, so that you can have access to them. Um, again, you know. One of the key roles for employers is really providing the uh, kind of best in class, uh, non uh, non biased or unbiased resources to your to your employees. Um, well, Xavier, let's start with this one. You know, there was a question from Catherine here about um, Medigap. I think it that is something that people are always a little confused about, and I was wondering if you could just start us there again, remind us what Medigap is, and then um, is that just is Medigap just for 65 and up, or, or can you get access if you have disabilities? Yeah, so you can actually can get it um, a little under. It was one period of time where you couldn't. And it also can vary, I believe, from state to state as well. Um, but the Medigaps or supplemental, you can you may hear them by two different names. Um, they do exactly what the name suggests, right? Do we know what the part B is? And boy, there is 20% that you are responsible for. And so they help fill in that gap. So, for example, um, my grandma was enrolled in Plan N. And with Plan N, you would have a, a small copay when you went to the doctor's office versus um, having to be responsible for that entire 20%. Uh, and so they are by private insurance companies and they are ran at the state level. And so a lot of the states are going to have really great information on that on their plans. So I know, for example, in Missouri, they would have a uh, a rate guidebook, and they would also have a complaint index. Um, and so it made it a lot easier for people who are wanting to get into a Medigap plan. They can say, oh, okay, this percentage of the market of, of people who are on a Medigap plan are enrolled into this plan, and they have a really low complaint index. So this must be a pretty good plan for me to enroll in. Um, but it's also really important to note that with, when it comes to a Medigap plan, that you're going to have probably 100 different insurance companies that are going to be offering the same plan. But a plan a plan G is a plan G is a plan G. No matter what, the, what insurance company it is sold by, 
And so it's really important to just look at the plan, the cost, and if you can get the complaint index to figure out if it's if it's a good plan. Um, those are just all those things to kind of keep in mind. And how I also like to think about it, um, a Medigap plan can be a little can be a little costly, right? It can be hundred, two hundred dollars a month on top of that Part B premium. So it's something that you really need to look at your finances and figure out what you are um, able to spend. Also, look at your health history. If you know that you're you're currently struggling with a lot of different health issues, or you know your family has a history of a lot of struggles with health um, with different health histories or issues, then maybe looking look into a Medigap plan would be better. Would be something that you need to consider more, because we do know with the Medicare Advantage plans that does also help you with that twenty percent, right? Because you have your out of pocket max, but that could be up to eight thousand. Ten thousand dollars. So it's really dependent depends on do you want to have that cost up front with your monthly premiums, but when something happens, you would hardly have any costs associated with it, or do you really or or do you have to put it all on the back end and to pay that hospital bill that could be up to ten thousand dollars with that out of pocket max. So those are just keep in mind when it comes um, to a Medigap. Uh, very helpful um, reminder. Xavier, we, we got um, a question about the 20 employee cutoff. And so I, I wonder if you could just hit that home for the employers on the line, what that cutoff is, because that's really important to today's conversation. And then a kind of slightly clarifying question from Gwyneth about, is that 20 part-time or 20 full-time? Um, what does that look like? Um, and, I, and I do wonder if you could also talk a little bit about how group health insurance works here. Yes. And so... For your employer. So if you have fewer than 20, then you're considered a small empl employer. And they and your employees will have different requirements than someone who has more than 20. So if you have someone that, that's less than 20, then they have to enroll into Medicare. And Medicare would become their primary. And if they continue with their employer sponsored health care, then that would be your secondary. Now, if you have a larger employer, Employee, you know, if you have more than 20 employees and consider a larger employer, then that gives their, the employee much more flexibility and freedom into what they would like to do with their Medicare. So they can enroll into Medicare when they are first eligible. They can delay Medicare altogether and wait until they retire, or they can kind of do a hybrid method into where they would keep their employer-sponsored health care and then just enroll in Part A. As we remember, most people have a premium-free Part A. And so some employee employers, instead of just being in a group in a health plan that is just their employee employees, they are in a plan that would combine multiple employers into one plan. So if you're in which is known as a group health plan. So if you are one of those people who are in that group health plan, and but even though you are a smaller employee employer, but someone within that group health plan is considered a larger employer then you can follow the larger employer rules. And you can see Medicare has a lot of little um, caveats, different things that can makes it to makes it a little harder to um, understand. And it's important to also know that employees is counted at 20 full or part-time employees. And so those are just some things to think about. Mm -hmm. No, thank you, um, Xavier. And then we're getting in some questions about the different enrollment windows. And so I wonder if you could just go over again, um, kind of initial um, enrollment, um, open enrollment and special enrollment. And there's a specific question about um, when do you get to switch Medigap plans? Yes. And so I'll start with the Medigap because that, that's the simplest. It depends on what state you're in. Um, sometimes you will just change a Medigap plan without going through underwriting or looking at your health history. Sometimes you can do it every year. It just really depends on what your state rules are. But there is not a designated time every year for every single person in this country to shop around or switch a Medigap plan. That is all determined by the state. So and crucially, those are different than uh, Medicare Part A and Part B. Uh, can you repeat that, Colin? I'm sorry. 
those those are separate then you can switch different plans and open enrollment correct so with open enrollment or we're going to start with initial enrollment initial enrollment is a seven month period and during that seven, seven month period it's three months before your birth month or the or your 25th month on disability your 65th birthday or the 25th month of disability and three months afterwards um so it gives they give you a long time to sign up for medicare and with that being said though you cannot sign up for like a part d plan a medicare advantage plan until you sign up for your original medicare until and, and until you have that red white and blue card where you can have your medicare number you can't sign up for the other parts so it's really important to think ahead that oh i need to sign up for my part a and part b now to make sure that i have it my card in enough time where i can sign up for my Medicare Advantage plan or a Part D plan and make sure there's no gaps in coverage. And so every year during October 15th through December 7th is your time you can shop around for a Medicare Advantage plan or a Part D plan. And you can go back and forth between the two as you choose fit. Um, so if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you can go to a Part D plan. Part D plan, you can go to a Medicare Advantage plan. You can stay in, the, in your same plan. With that being said, it is really important though to shop around every single year because the plan that you enroll that you are currently enrolled in, it could be that the next year that medic one of your medications is no longer covered. It could be that you're on a Medicare Advantage plan and the doctor you want to go to go and see is no longer going to be covered. It could be that your plan that you're currently enrolled in is going going up five dollars and there's a cheaper plan that's available and you would still have access to all your other um, things that you need. So it's really important to shop around every single year. And when I tell you, people have saved not only hundreds, but thousands of dollars from shopping around every single year. So it's really important to do so. Then we have our Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, which is January through um, March. So if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, you can um, go to a different Medicare Advantage plan or go back to a Part D plan. And also during that same time period of January 1st through uh, March, if you did not sign up for your Part A and Part B during your initial enrollment, this is known, um, you can sign up for it during this time. And this is known as your general enrollment period. Now, if you are still working and you're about to retire and you would like to sign up for your um, Medicare, your original Medicare Part A and Part B, then you would qualify for a special enrollment period where you can get enrolled into those plans and then eventually get into a Medicare Advantage plan or a Part D plan. And also something else I would like to mention, especially with um, this being an employer group, is some of you might have Medicare Advantage plan that you offer to your retirees and also make sure that they are aware of those rules. So for example, my dad's on Medicare, but he's a retiree of the state of Missouri. He gets his Medicare plan through through the state, I don't have to do anything with them, right? But if he ch chooses not to enroll into that plan for this year and he wants to go to the market and sign up for a Medigap plan or something, then they're not gonna allow him back onto the state plan um, after the fact. So make sure that when you are educating your employees, that if you have those type of rules, if you have an employer, um, a plan that you offer them, make sure that they're, they know they, they can jump on and off. That's really helpful. Xavier, we, we got a few questions about the penalties. I wonder if you can um, toggle back to that slide and just remind folks about what these penalties are and why why it's so important that um, folks are aware of these, especially ones that can that can last your the remainder of your life. Yeah, so as Colin was saying, these penalties for Part B and D at least will stick with you for as long as you have Medicare. So if you've messed up um, when you're first eligible for Medicare, that could, you know, stick with you for 20 years. And that's, think about all that money that you're wasting spending, um, and going towards penalties and that's keeping it for your pocket for a rainy day. So when it comes to Part A, for it is 10% for, for of the monthly premium for twice the number of years that you did not sign up. So if you did not sign up for um, Part A when you were first eligible and you went two years without it, then you will um, be responsible for paying the penalty for four years. 
now for for part B, it's for every for each twelve month period that you go uncovered, um, you will have a ten percent penalty. So as I said earlier, if you went eleven months without signing up for your part B, then you would not have a penalty. It's every complete twelve months that you go uncovered, and so that would be seventeen some dollars for this year that you would be responsible for paying on top of the hundred seventy four dollars that you that you are responsible for. So you can see where that can really add up. And this penalty will stick with you for a lifetime. Now, part D is in drug. That is for every month you go uncovered. You know, it would be really nice if they, if they, if the rules were the same for each part, but unfortunately that's not the case. So for every month you go uncovered, you pay 1% of the natural base um, premium amount. And so if you go 10 years being uncovered, then you're going to pay 120% of the national base premium cost. And that will also stick with you for a lifetime. The only way that you can get out, there's two ways you can get out of it. One is if you um, qualify for an assistance program, so like we're talking about the low-income subsidy, Medicare savings program, or Medicaid or if you're someone who's on Medicare due to like a disability, so you're under the age of 65, once you turn 65, it's kind of like a clean slate to Medicare. So you can kind of start that process all over. And so your penalty would be waived then as well. Um, thank you. And then we're, we're getting some questions, Xavier, about who, who to talk to for help because we know there's a lot of kind of personal situations that people are are, are asking about. And so, uh, you know, do you find that there's like an email that people should reach out to? Is there a phone number um, that they should go out to? That's question one. And, and then question number two is really, you know, how do we make sure we, you know, employers get the trustworthy information about all the providers? Because we know there's a lot out in the market and there's a lot of confusion. And it's one of the roles that employers have to play. Yes. So what's really great about the SHIP program or the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, there is one in every state in, or in the U.S. territory. And so this 877-839-2675 number is their general number. And so and what they'll do, if you were to call it, they would um, direct you to the state based off of what your area code is on your from the phone number you're calling from. Or each state does have a personalized number. And what's really great about the ships is not only are they in every state, they're probably people in your local community who could be ship counselors. Um, so for example, like I said, this is how I got my start in, in um, doing Medicare work. We had churches who were um, ship counselors. We had um, assisted living facilities who, who were, we had people in hospital systems, um, people at your senior center who were trained. Um, so there were people and we had pharmacies and pharmacists who were trained. So if when people came through their pharmacies that they could help them and counsel them on, on, on their Medicare options. So these are gonna be local people in your community that can help you. And the great thing is, like I said, this is a, um, this is a federal program. And so they're unbiased, they can, uh, push you to anything. They're not going to force you to pick a certain plan or go Medicare Advantage plan versus, versus a Medigap. They just want to help you um, get enrolled. And the only thing that they cannot actively enroll you in is a Medigap plan. But they can do everything else. If you need help, they will enroll you into a, a whatever Medicare Advantage plan, whatever Part D plan you want. If you need um, an assistance program, they'll help you there. If you don't qualify for assistance program because your income may be a little high, then they're going to look into pharmaceuticals pro programs for you, um, and different things like that. So they're they're a really great resource. And the crazy thing is they've been around for over thirty years, and they're still a little, they're still a well kept secret. With that being said, as well, every year, if you know anyone who's on Medicare, they get that really thick Medicare and U book in the mail every single year. If you flip it on the back page, that will have your state's ship um, phone number for you on it. Also, we have the Medicare Rights Center who can um, provide you with really great resources as well. And if for employers specific um, resources, feel free to go to ARP.org slash Medicare employer. 
you can get some really great toolkit tips or infographics on here that could be that will be really beneficial for your employees as they navigate Medicare. Now, and, and I think Xavier, the ships are such a great place for you to start. So whether you're a small business owner um, or business owner who's thinking about where do I send my employees or whether you're someone who's kind of approaching um, this decision point um, and approaching this, this stage of life, they are the first step to really get that unbiased and accurate information. And, and that's, we can't recommend them enough. And it's really important to, 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 to write those phone numbers down, to go to go to their websites and, and to learn more about them. Um, Xavier, we have a lot of questions um, that are, um, you know, related to someone's kind of specific issues. You know, where would you send folks who didn't get their questions answered today, but want to make sure that they get a chance to get those answered? Let's see. If you go to um, ARP.org slash Medicare, you can see at the top here, there is a Medicare Q&A tool. You can go on there and most like and most likely you can find your questions there. Um, you can do a nice little search and, and your question could come up. And if it, for some reason it doesn't, you can send your question in and we'll make sure that it gets answered. Amazing. Well, and, and as we finish up here, just the last few minutes, um, Xavier, you know, what is, what are one thing that you want employers to take away from this conversation today? And what's one thing you want to make sure anyone who's um, approaching uh, Medicare um, and uh, eligibility want, should take away? Yes, I think just time periods, making sure that you have all your ducks in a row. And I think that's the same, doesn't matter if it, if, the, if you're an employer telling your employee or someone who's about to um, go into initial enrollment period. There, and that there are trusted resources out there who will help you throughout along the way is um, another thing. And, you know, we are here to help. If you, if you need a presentation specifically for your, um, for your employer or for your employees, we are here to help you um, do that. We'll be more than willing to do that. Um, get you connected to other resources or whatever you may need. Here's my contact information feel free to reach out and we'll make sure that we can help you in any way we can. Oh, wonderful. Well, Xavier, um, thank you so much. It's just been such a rich um, presentation today. Phil, there's so, so much information. I know, again, we've gotten this question a few times from folks about asking, hey, are, are you going to share this? So don't worry, we are sharing the recording. We'll work on that um, hopefully in the next few days. We will share it via the email you registered with. So that's how we'll get this information back out to you. But do not hesitate to reach out to our team or reach out to Xavier with any of your questions. Uh, and we're just thankful for your time today uh, and, and for joining us. This is an incredibly complex topic, but hopefully you all learned something today and, and really um, can bring this back to your organization. So thank you for joining us. Xavier, I always like to give you the last word um, before we officially close out. Well, thank you all for joining us today for this webinar and also um, I just want to remind you, open enrollment is <laughs> right around the corner, October 15th through December 7th. Make sure if you, someone, your loved one is on M Medicare, make sure that they do shop around to make sure that they are still enrolled in the best um, plan possible for them for, for the upcoming year. Wonderful. Well, thank you all. This is now the official end of our presentation. Be on the lookout for more information via email uh, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.